Welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast with your host Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. We're here on episode 189. I know we're by ourselves, so you guys probably won't tune into this. <laughs> yeah, well, not technically by ourselves. No, I have uh, my beautiful daughter's here. She uh, she's eating some lunch, eating some uh, the chicken nuggets, watching her Grinch stole Christmas. Um, but she's staying home today, so. Yeah, it is the two of us, so this will probably the numbers are going to drop. I we can, do have a guest later on. Though. We do have a guest later on uh, for the for this episode. If you're interested in batting gloves or custom batting gloves, this guy's the best that I've. Go ahead and drop it. Uh, Quero Batting Gloves. Jason Moore is the owner. Um, I don't know how long they've been doing it, but when I was at City, I just I was looking for something cool, right, for the players. Like that's. I always wanted to do something cool, make it more Division One like you know, for Fresno City. And I found this guy out of Texas, and I really liked his batting gloves and uh, got a really good deal. His batting gloves are – I think Franklin might be the best batting glove in the game, the way they make them. I know big leaguers get there made, you know, differently mm-hmm. from um, – but I think Nike breaks down really easy. Uh, great batting glove. Did them. We got them in, like, a really good time, a good price with the amount we ordered – and uh, we had some guys where they kind of the seams were coming out and stuff. He just sent me. He told me to get them up. He sent me more, and it was in like a couple weeks. I got I got the replacements. So um, Jason Moore, Quero baseball gloves, custom gloves, batting gloves. Um, I think Clovis yeah. High reached out. They got Clovis High did some last year. They didn't really do much posting of it on social media. Yeah, I think which, it was kind of late though too when they, when yeah, they did it. Right, they season. did it late in the season. Uh, so that'll be cool. Get get some uh, little background on, on how they started and just a little bit there. Uh, follow the podcast on Instagram at Hit or Die on TikTok at Hit or Die also and on Twitter at Hit or Die Podcast. Also subscribe here on YouTube if you're watching uh, and if you're listening, please head over and hit subscribe. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, and also download. Make sure you're downloading the podcast, whether it's on uh, Spotify or iTunes. Um, yeah, man, it's been it's been nuts. Like it's been the best it's ever done in the three and a half years we've done this. The last, and that's all guests. I get. I'm I'm not stupid. It's guests. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not oblivious to it. But it's been pretty cool. Uh, Fresno. We has, should just say we're having Labby on like every. So yeah. They tune in. Yeah. And we'll they're just like, throw. <laughs> Oh, crap. He's really not on. They got me. We can wait. Well, Labby's not going to show up, I guess. We'll get him next week. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, it's But it's the numbers have not only, like, not just kind of been better, like doubled. And yeah. it's, uh, I just, you know, we appreciate it. Uh, Fresno's been nuts. Madera's actually been nuts. But what surprised me, I like to always, like, look at the top five after a few months go by. Mm-hmm. And in this last month, obviously, Fresno was number one, far and above. Like, insane, uh, the numbers from Fresno. Madera was number two. But three, four, and five, Sacramento, Elk Grove, and Roseville. All Sacramento area uh, uh, towns. I think Clovis was, like, maybe dropping down to number 10. I'm, I, not, I'm not surprised. I don't know. Uh, but, no, it's pretty cool to see. They don't want to hear the truth over there. Uh, Ventura Clovis. was six. Ventura, so I just we appreciate it wherever you are. Uh, thank you very much for for tuning in, downloading, and supporting what we do. We really appreciate that, and the feedback's been great. Uh, love seeing the messages and stuff like that. Uh, over the weekend, my buddy here, uh, former coach at Madera High School, uh, they had their alumni or uh, Hall of Fame dinner, and the uh, 2013 section title team that they coached. Uh, was inducted into the Hall of Fame. It was a 10-year anniversary this mm-hmm. year. It was pretty cool. Always a good event. Uh, awesome. For, you know, I, I consider us maybe a small school. We're not technically very <laughs> small as far as enrollment goes. No, but Andy does good. He, I think he started that the year two. It was, I think he started 2013. Might have been the first, was the first year. I don't remember. We didn't do it in 12. And then I think we might have done it in 13. And he's been doing it for the last 10 years. And it's a great event. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Love that he brought the Hall of Fame back. There's so many yeah. people to recognize. And it was cool being the 10-year anniversary of you guys uh, winning. That was your guys' first championship. Mm-hmm. Um, Second in school history. Yeah, yeah. It had been like 17-year drought. It was it was just a great event. It was really cool to, to kind of see some of the players that came back. Some of the guys FaceTimed, uh, which was really cool. Uh, a couple guys in the military, uh, Josh Wiles and Dustin, Dustin Chambers, Chambers uh, couldn't be there. Uh, serving our country so 
a shout out to those guys. But it was just, you know, that knowing these kids as growing up, like it was just cool to see them now as adults. I wasn't a part of that staff, but uh, uh, cool moment, man. Andy does a great job. And congratulations to you on that staff in the Madera Hall of Fame before you're in the Bullard Hall of Fame. Bullard has a Hall of Fame? I, it's I not know. complete until my buddy, my buddy right here is in it. I'll say that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get into that one. <laughs> if I'm the coach, I'll put you in there. So I'll never get in. <laughs> Pretty much, I guess. Uh, but that's another topic for another day, I think. Maybe. Or not. We can do that. I mean, we, it's, I'm not like. Does it? Like, I mean, that's the only that's reason, the only, right? I'm fucking Barry Bonds. And I'm not saying I'm as good as Barry Bonds. No. Like, in, in, the saying, of they in the don't, terms of they they're don't. They're not like, fans of I'm Chad. I'm chilling then or something. You know what I mean? Like. They just don't like me because I just want to tell it like it is. But I didn't you don't get the trash. job because I was going to do my own thing, and they didn't want that. They wanted to micromanage somebody. So it's just like. But you don't trash Bullard High School. No, I haven't. I, I mean. But we don't. I think. I mean, I know the one thing that bothered some people last year, but. We never even said who the team was. Got past the that, was, I think. You know, maybe not. I, but whatever. that has nothing to do with. You. Well, I guess it does because we, we do this together, but not necessarily has to do with you. They've had their time, I guess, to put you in there is what I'm saying. Oh, compared to some of the players that have been going in. Yes, I definitely should be in there. Not only just because my high school stats, but, you know, my career. So that's where it's kind of like, really? But do you think you know? about it though? Like, do you like, do you like, I think about it every, when it comes around every February, when it comes around, yeah. you do that sucks, man. Yeah. I mean, my brother's in, I'm thankful for him. He went in as a player and as their team, their 99 Valley championship team. And, and, uh, my uncle Craig's in there. So, uh, someday, I don't know, maybe yeah. we'll yeah. see. Probably I'll keep, not. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, that's going to be hard to do anything with your fingers crossed <laughs> the rest of your life. Uh, the other thing that happened over the weekend was Fresno State Baseball uh, had their annual alumni game, first with coach, uh, head coach Ryan Overland. And yes. I liked your tweet out there, of, uh, and I don't think it was meant to be rude or taken any way other than let's remove the interim tag. He's our head coach. He's running the team this year. Um, I'm all for it. But, well, I mean, uh, they're not going to – every time – they go somewhere. They're not going to be like interim head coach Ryan Overland. No, they're going to. They're say, not going to announce it. That no, they're going to no. say the head coach Ryan Overland. Yeah. So as a community, that we need to do that too. We need to get behind him. You know, he's he's an alum. He played. He knows the bulldog way. He's getting back to the the Bennett alumni, and I mean, I think that was a really good showing. You were at the alumni game, so it's just like, dude, let's just get behind somebody. If it's interim, we know it's interim in the paperwork. Okay, We're great. But he is the head coach. Let's call him that. Yeah, he's right in the lineups. He's making the decisions, and yeah, it was. Uh, it's always a good experience. I, that was my first time, like being a part of it down on the field, and and maybe I wasn't. I probably, I probably wasn't even supposed to be down there, but I kind of just stayed down there to talk, and then I was. I was. I was going to go take my seat, and they just turned into like, "What well, he's starting." I wanted to get a video of that, and then the next thing you know, an hour and a half's gone by, and I've talked to like ten or eleven different guys, and I needed to go. They were all very nice and welcome. And nobody said anything, but I just like nobody. Yeah. I, there was a story. Did you big league a big leaguer, dude? You have to bring that up, bro. I didn't tell anybody that. I felt like such it's a, funny. It's funny. I though. felt like it's such funny, a though. piece of shit afterwards, and I must have apologized like four times. I I was. I'll just go ahead and say it, okay. At the beginning, when I get down there, that they go down. Because you were overwhelmed, too, of, like, well, everybody yeah, there. Yeah, there was a lot of guys that we yeah. had on the podcast, too, so I'm trying to catch up. And so they're getting ready to go down into the dugout to do their pregame meeting, right? Uh, and so I'm going to get out of the way, and I see somebody, and I'm going to go. I was going to go talk to him real quick. Yeah. As guys were going this, and we, we're, I'm walking by somebody really fast, and they put their hand on my shoulder. And said, what's up? And I go, hey, how's it going? But I didn't really like <laughs> look, look to see who it was. I was going to go because somebody was get, I, I think it was Walden had showed up finally. Marcus came by. Okay. And I was going to go, you know, point him down here. Yeah. And I, like a half hour goes by. Woody pitches, does a great, right? And we're chatting. And I look to my right and I see Ben Fritz. <laughs> and I go, wait a second. The guy that tapped me was wearing a hat. That ja And I go, oh, my God. I said, Woody, that's Fritzy. And he goes, Yeah. I go, son of a bitch. He tapped me and said hi, and I just walked right by him, like, get away from me, kid. I'm not signing autographs today. <laughs> and he's so I go tell him and he starts laughing. He's like, Yeah, you fucking big league, bro. 
And uh, no, we ended up having a good like 20, 30 minute combo. And uh, he's just, he's awesome, dude. Yeah, he, great. He sports. He, us he was busting my balls about it a little bit. And he went and saw you when you were down in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. He saw was, the kids. Yeah. And, no, and I'm going in in March to spring yeah. training. He was you know hit me up while you're down there. So, but it was just funny. I was like, oh my god, I felt like such a jerk, <laughs> dude. I just thought it was a good story. Um, yeah, it was not. It was, it was a good event, man. It was fun to see. Um, just all the guys and hear the banter and the lot in the dugout and uh, seeing some of the players laugh as, as much as competitive as you want to be, even for Ovi trying to get his, you know, yeah. trying to get some type of evaluation uh, had been there. You, you could tell it was also just it kind of needed to be a fun day. Yeah. And ultimately it was, uh, I didn't get to stay for the finish, but uh, decent crowd out there. Uh, I'm excited, man. They start a uh, home opener. I think it's the 23rd against uh, Nebraska. Uh, they'll be back from Arizona the weekend before that, so just gonna be, it's gonna be fun to see, man. I'm excited for him. We keep talking about it and uh, get out there as much as I can. I mean, what else do you want? A Big Ten team coming in here, right? After they go play Michigan, Michigan State. But I mean, a home it's, opener. You got Big Ten Nebraska, which in the early 2000s were a College World Series team every year, and I mean they're still good. They're going they're going through their stuff, but let's go support. The dog, not only OV and that. Like, here's a Big Ten team. Let's show them. You guys want to be in the Big Twelve? I think it's the Nebraska o- Omaha. Oh, it's Nebraska Omaha. Yeah. Still, it doesn't matter. Fucking not Lincoln. I'm still, still saying like we want to be in the Pac-12. Four games to- Friday, sat or Thursday night. It starts fr- Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, all good game times too. So, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I'm ready to go. The Cal Poly is going to be coming to town. There's, you know, with the goose be there. Some local guys coming back. I think USF's coming to town. UOP, it's, it's going to be a good start to the season. Uh, and then obviously when, when Mountain West kicks in. Uh, but, you know, it was a good event, man. It was cool. To, again, it was very cool to watch Andy get to he start. He had two strikeouts. He finished the, the – the, went two scoreless, first and second, and, he, yeah, he ended up the uh, the first inning with back-to-back Ks. I saw one of them was um, a lefty. It was uh, – Ben Newton. No. Was that the ground the video I posted? Grand, the ground out was Ben Newton. He he K'd up uh, Jody Allen's kid. Oh, uh, Peyton? Yeah. I saw that, and I, I mean, felt bad because Peyton's such a good kid. But it just, like, it brought back, like, oh, that's what he did to COS. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I, didn't even think, I didn't even connect those dots for a minute. <laughs> I, just hey, I will it, say though. this. Peyton Allen might have my favorite glove on that team, though. Yeah. Yeah, and I told him that, So, but shout out. Hey, now, dude, he had a no, good. No, he's good, too. Yeah, no, he's, he's a, swing he's a, a good little kid, and grinder he uh in fact when i was there their squad a couple weeks ago he had a couple good ab so i'm just a lot of things to be excited about fresno state again seeing murph gray you know have Gosh, Andy face it. murph. We still, not look like a freshman no dude the kid just gets bigger and and they're really high on him they're super excited uh so no get out there and support the guys again the 23rd is their home opener at uh biden field uh, so be ready to go chad this sunday though a little random sports talk not all baseball today yeah we're going to kind of weave around some stuff. Maybe a little baseball, but not what you think. Super Bowl Sunday is approaching. Philadelphia, the Eagles, will be taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. You and I don't talk a lot of football on here. Uh, mm-hmm. We do talk privately about some football. I don't know your Super Bowl pick, bro. Who are you going to roll with this year in the Super Bowl? I don't know. I'm kind of like going back and forth. Like I'm a big, I'm a big Travis Kelsey guy. I mean, it, they both have won Super Bowls, Travis and Jason, his brother, which is the center for the Eagles. I just, I think I'm gonna pull for Hertz though. Yeah. Nobody wanted him. I mean, look what he. I mean, Alabama to OU to OU to nobody wanted him with the Eagles. He didn't start right away. Nobody thought he'd be a starting quarterback in the NFL. I mean, he's undefeated this season. They've lost two or three games, but he wasn't the quarterback. No. He was they were resting him. Um and yeah, he's a good guy. He works hard. Um I'm I I I haven't even said this, but I just did. I think I'm gonna go for the Eagles. I, I have uh I, I on the other one on lips came out and said Eagles. But only because I think they're gonna be the underdog in this one. Uh, and I just always tend to well, pull yeah, the for goat, the underdogs. The goat's on the other team, right? I mean, he's pretty good, bro. I know he's pretty good, but you can't call him. Here's the a debate already. that I had again. If you listen to the other Watcher Lips podcast, we had a pretty big debate on this, and I, I think you and I, I don't even know if we did talk about it. I don't know. A lot of people started coming out and talking about how Mahomes. You know, obviously, you got to give him some credit. He played well, uh, not a hundred percent. 
But do you? Some people were pushing back on the how severe the high ankle sprain or a high. I've, I mean, I've had a pretty, pretty torn up ankle before. I, I don't know. They're freaks, though. They're different animals. I mean, you know what I mean. It's but people were questioning, I guess, in the media how injured maybe or how bad of a high ankle. Like some people were saying, that they may not be able to walk, let yeah. alone play. And play at that level. Yeah, but I mean, imagine the adrenaline. Imagine the training staff. And I bet you he didn't even go home that whole week. And I say that as a fan. I like him. And yeah. I thought he was the great. But it it was brought up on different occasions. And I was kind of pushing back towards, you know, if it was really that bad, would he, have, would he have been that mobile? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know how mobile he really was, but he had a couple moments in there. Uh, but, yeah, I think I'm going to take the, I'm going to roll the Eagles as well. I know we asked Loop last week. Um, I think he was thinking the same thing. It's kind of weird. Most of the people I'm talking, I've got one out of like the six I've asked that are going KC. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. We'll have to see. I'm, I love watching the Super Bowl, though. Um, I think it, what it, I think they saw, what, 90 million, 100 million viewers last the last one. So it just keeps going up and up and up. I don't know how. I think the Super Bowl commercial game's gone down a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't. You get a couple a year. I mean, I always look yeah. forward to it, and then there's maybe two, and it's like, eh. I don't know. Do you ever bet on it? I used to do the squares. That's about it. Yeah, uh, It's all fundraisers now. Yeah. Uh, uh, the squares is all fundraisers. Is it? I don't know. You don't get text messages from people? What the hell? Dude, I get... I've been... Dude, nobody... Nobody... <laughs> I don't... Dude, nobody <laughs> calls me, texts me, asks me to do things. I've, I don't know, man. <laughs> Probably had <laughs> like ten different squares. I might be the least likable person in this area. I don't know. No, which is fine. No, I care. You less. think the least? I mean, I that's don't a, think that's so. a hell of a list. We got to figure that list out. Um, I mean, it could be worse. I could, you know. Um, <laughs> <don't> know. <laughs> be a Twitter dad out there. Oh fuck <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we got to have him though. I almost posted a Twitter of CJ catching and, and say he's looking for <laughs> elite AU travel team. He's uncommitted, but I didn't. You didn't want to be offensive. Oh, uh, you know, hurt people's feelings. Who cares? I just it's I never leave, stopped you before. I leave the family stuff to Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, the other thing I was going to bring up, and I, I don't know how much, you know, I saw a clip on TikTok regarding uh, Michael Jordan. It was a goat conversation with LeBron. And uh, Ari Spears is a comedian, uh, famous comedian, was on Mad TV, uh, pretty funny guy, had a little breakdown of his thoughts on that debate. Mm. And I don't know if, did you ever hear it? I never sent it to you because so. I was trying to wait for so. this, but so I, I'll, uh, I'll play it. It's long. It's a six minute clip. I don't think I'll play the whole thing, but just the gist of it, I thought was, I don't know. It's pretty good. LeBron, how you feel about him passing up Kareem this year as the all-time leading scorer in the NBA? Listen, if he sticks around even longer, he'll pass up every fucking thing. <laughs> you know, I love when people try to say, and I'm, and I'm, listen, I'm, I get it. I'm a LeBron fan. People think I'm not. I am. I recognize his greatness, but he ain't MJ. He's not fucking with MJ. And it's like, People like to sit there and go, well, he's passed this and this record and this record. Yeah, he's been in the game since high school. No breaks. Like Jordan, two years off of baseball. No breaks. You know, Jordan quitting when he didn't want to quit the second time around, but the Jerrys broke up the fucking team. LeBron has been in it since high school with no breaks. And as long as he continues to stay around, yeah, he's going to pass every fucking record. He's been around long enough. When people do compare the two, right, LeBron and Jordan, they always point out their finals record. They say LeBron yes. was 4-6 in the finals, and Jordan, he was 6-0 and in the finals. Do you think that yes. matters when comparing the two? Yes. I, l listen, this, this to me is a testament to this, to this moist era we live in. 4-6 and six is a losing record. What are we celebrating? Mediocrity? Let me ask you a question. What would you rather have? A big dick that works sometimes four and six, or an average dick that works all the time six and zero. Oh. I'll take the average that yeah, works all the time. Hello, <laughs> come on, man. I, and you know I love it because people say the dumb shit like, "Well, look at the team that LeBron he took a bunch of bombs to the finals." First of all, 
the Eastern Conference, when LeBron was in it, was called the Leaston Conference because it was an easy conference, number one. Number two, when Jordan played in the East, look who he had to get past. The Cavs, the Pistons, the Pacers, the Knicks. The defense was tougher. And keep in mind, Michael Jordan, when he came into the league, took a bunch of coke-infested bulls that were <laughs> bums and lost to the uh, uh, Boston Celtics, who at the time had five Hall of Famers. That's the game when Michael scored 63 in Boston Garden, where the, where the Celtics only lost two games all season. And Larry Bird said he's God disguised as Michael. You don't think Michael Jordan could have took that same Cavs team to the fucking finals? As, as whack as the Eastern Conference was? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Hell yeah, he would have took them to the finals, yo. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> And people, you know what? People don't understand. Now I'm getting fucking hyped. People don't understand. I Listen, yeah. man. It's a long clip, dude. I would yeah. I would tell I'll people. Go, I'll go look, watch it. I'll, I'll I think send I've it seen to you. clips of the clip. Right. And I'll, I'll get the, because he gets into like the Kobe part of it too. Like Kobe's yeah. not even, he's got Jordan and Kobe. This is his top two. Yeah. I think you just, I thought the, the point of no breaks, right? And him being in since high school, whereas Jordan went to college. You know what I mean? Yeah. What would he have done had he not? played at unc and played you know went straight to the nba yeah i don't know i i don't know i still you know i just i go back to just the defense man like you lebron as big as he is and that's what people he's so physical he's so big then why is he such a pussy when he gets hit why does he like act like every foul matters like the other day when he got fouled and he's crying on the ground you think Jordan would have done that? No. Because he got his hand no. hit? First of all, Jordan would have gone up with the left and switched, switched it to the it right midair and, and just fucking yeah. dunked it or something. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and then I just, I've been seeing stuff too. Jordan's never said he was the best. Jordan's never said that. And you have LeBron saying, I think I solidified that I'm the greatest. I didn't, he said that, right? Yeah. I, I saw it today in a clip, and I'm just like... I don't pay attention, because this is honestly that, one of the worst times of se year for sports, for me. Yeah. Because I'm not a big basketball fan. Uh, I mean, I watched some racing. That's starting to get going, but like, you know, and then football's coming to a close. Baseball's right around the corner, so I'm, I'm getting excited, but... I mean, they even posted, if even if LeBron finished his career now, he still has two finals less, two uh, MVPs less, two, like, it just, it was like a, a whole other career that he has less than Michael Jordan in accolades. And more time in the league. And more time in the league. And, like, somebody was saying if Jordan played 20 years in the league, he would have destroyed the, the rec scoring record. It would have been, like, 42,600 and something. Like, he would have destroyed it. But he's like Derek Jeter. He just wanted to win, like, he wanted to win, and, like, he just – I don't know. I just, I just – and I like LeBron because he was 03. He's my age. Like, when he was well, coming out of good. high school, I mean, that was, like, our guy, the next whatever. I just think he got too cocky and too – Well, the other thing he talks same. about, if you keep watching that clip, was go look at his team with the Heat. They weren't – they were loaded. Loaded. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's a discussion. I try to stay out of it now because it's just not even. It's like talking about Barry Bonds. I know. The best. You it's know just, what I mean? It's just. It's just fun to. To I just I hadn't heard a take like that. I thought. And it was if an you weren't there take. to watch Michael Jordan play and understand that, then you, you, you have to pick LeBron, I guess. You know. But even then, like Kobe, man, like you watch Kobe and what he did and his mentality, like he had the Jordan mentality. He was like the last one of that era. Again, not trying to give away too much of that clip, but that again, that's another point that he go. I mean, he gets into like those guys were killers. Yeah, Kobe and and Michael were killers. Yep. So it, it's a pretty cool clip. If there's a link to that out the TikTok or wherever, I think I forget where I saw, it, but I'll put it in the clip or description of the video. But just an interesting take. I loved the, getting that discussion, and I just finished watching some of the uh, Last Dance again, so it made it. Made me want to get into it a little bit. I want to go watch his airness. Remember that video? It was on VHS. Oh, bro. I don't even. Pff, I couldn't remember. Yeah. How, I mean, it. It was just like. It was like his. It was like uh, the last dance, but like his career. Like just Jordan. Like it was pretty much all that. It was great. I remember watching it. I mean, did the championships what make Jordan the greatest though? No. Just the player he was. Right. I think that's the, the the thing that people. It's easy to go to that six and zero. Oh. 
I mean, he he went out and said, what did you say about me? I'm going to put 50 on you. And did 50. And then, you know what I mean? Like, he, he went out and did what he said he was going to do. You're right. It's the Bonds talk. It's the Hank Aaron. It's going to be Willie the Tom Mays, Brady talk. The Tom Brady. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tom Brady's kind of. That there's okay. Well, it'll be the Tom Brady talk one. when Mahomes is getting ready. To <laughs> sure, retire, I guess I you guess, could I say. Guess, I don't know. Potentially, yes. Who knows? Yeah, I think the younger kids are always going to side with the LeBron side of this argument, which is fine. Nobody's saying he's not one of them. Yeah, that's all. I just liked some of the takes in there. Uh, again, not being a huge basketball. And then people like, what about follower. Bill Russell? Like, you know, what I mean, like eleven championships, and so it's just. Hey, I'm telling you, it's another part of that clip. I'm going to send it to you. You got to watch it. It's like six and a half minutes. I couldn't play it on here the whole yeah. time, but it's still it's worth watching. I just think MJ all around, defensive, all teams, all that kind of stuff, all around, he's just the better player. I'm with you. I think most people would be, but just it's still that argument's never going to. And I'm I'm with you too. I'd take Kobe next over LeBron. I just love. I yeah. I'm not. I LeBron would be my three anyways. Like <laughs> you know, I MJ. Kobe and LeBron. Because well, there is something to say for how long he's actually been able to play in the league at the level he yeah, played it. I'm 37. I can't imagine it. I mean, obviously, he's in the greatest shape ever. But, but I mean, your body breaks down. It does. You know, and it, he's he's made it through all that. So uh, the other thing, and the last thing before we get to our guest is I know you're a big video game guy, uh, MLB The Show guy. Um. It's coming out March 28th, 23, the uh, MLB The Show 23. And this year, for the first time, Negro League players are coming to the show. Uh, Sony announced on Monday that eight Negro League legends will be included in the new game. uh, The new game mode uh, storylines is what it's called. The eight players available in storyline mode will be Buck O'Neill, Hank Thompson, Hilton Smith, Jackie Robinson, John Donaldson, Satchel Page, Rube Foster, and Martin DeHigo. Uh, be able to choose the players and embark on a narrative journey through their lives, which includes short informational videos. And at the end, you can actually play with one of the Negro League legends during that important or during the most important moments of their careers. Uh, so that'd be pretty cool. Why it's taken so long? I, that's kind of crazy to me. I mean, you see, yeah. I, I mean, I can't believe they weren't already in there. I just assumed that. I don't. I haven't played the show though, bro, in a couple of years. Because it's the same game. It's always the same game. So I was like, I'm going to stop buying it. Yeah, that's the one game I buy every year, no matter what. And um, I haven't played it for. I haven't, my PS5 is not working. So if anybody knows how to fix PS5, let me know. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know why it's taking this long. I mean, this it should be teams. It shouldn't just be this many players. Just it players. Should, yeah. It be, should be their teams should be in there. They should have, you know, you should be able to pick the teams to play in, in a exhibition game or whatever, if you want to play online. Um, so some of those are the best uh, unis too. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so. And I, I think they should be like the Kansas city, whatever they were, they should have that uniform for the Royals even, I think. Right. Um, so, so something new to see if you haven't seen that already. Uh, MLB The Show uh, going to add some new features to the game. I might buy this this one this time. Like I said, it just was so it was always the same thing. I know like the gear packs would change, but virtually, you know, it, uh, my ver my my uh, I think I have like twenty one or I don't even know which one I have. What's the one with Judge on the cover? That's the one I have. Do you know? I remember that. That might have been twenty. It might have been twenty one. So it was just. The one before this last one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into that. I think, yeah, because Shohei was on this last one. Uh, yeah, just I just wanted to shout out some of that stuff. Nothing really major going on. Baseball's, again, it's right around the corner. You got the WBC going to start here soon. Um, so it, once baseball starts getting, you know, the high schools have been doing their their stuff around here. The Saturday, some scrimmages took place. Uh, so a lot of baseball getting ready to gear up and kick off. Uh, as it starts to get into game season, we'll obviously be covering more stuff. Uh, I just wanted to bring those things up. Get into our guest. Again, Quero batting gloves. Hold on tight. We're going to be right back with him.
Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hit It Eye podcast uh, with your host Jake Saldana and Chad Rother. We have our guest Jason Moore out of Texas with Quero Batting Gloves. Uh, Jason, thanks for joining the show. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Where uh, we're at exactly in Texas? Uh, we're in Dallas. We're in North Dallas. Okay. And uh, just real quick, I will just right off the right off the bat, right out of the gate, what got you into batting gloves? Uh, I have a company, my company, um, originally started with cycling gloves and we still have a cycling glove line. And then when my son was 10 years old, he started up on his first, uh, select team. And the guy who runs that org said, Hey, could, I know you could do cycling gloves. Could you do uh, batting gloves too? And I called my vendor and he, he said, yeah, we got batting gloves. So, so we made them some custom batting gloves for their org. Um, that's basically how it started. That was a we did a bunch of mock-ups to make sure the fit was right and all that stuff, and went through several rounds of that. And then we ended up doing a doing a uh, we used my son's team as a test team. Uh, we did maybe fifteen pairs for those guys for a season or two while we worked out the kinks, and then they ordered like a hundred and seventy-five pairs. My first order. Yeah, they're. I mean, the quality is good. We've talked. I mean, you and I have talked a bunch uh, about the quality, and I, I think it's. It's a, it's kind of like a Franklin. That's what I kind of compared it to is the Franklin uh, batting glove, which is, I think, the most durable batting glove out there with the big name brands. And um, I was very impressed with it. Uh, I know our Fresno City guys loved it. Um, so, I mean, the quality is great. The price, I think, is is very reasonable for, you know, comparable to the name brands and stuff. So, um, you know, trying to help you get more out here. I know you had us and Clovis and you've had guys give mock-ups, but how can we help you to try to get the business out here to California? Really? We would just need, we just would love to have as many, as many schools as we could get. Um, as you said, our, um, our, our quality, we, we really don't focus heavy on, on uh, a design aspect, right? We're not super high end on our design, like say, say maybe War Stick or Bruce Bolt or some of those guys, but we really focus on the fit and the construction and the materials that we use. We want our gloves to be as durable as possible. Like we can easily get our high school guys can get an entire high school season off a single pair of batting gloves. Um, Chad, as you know, your FCC guys, they our palms are one piece palms, so there's no seams anywhere. There's no weird rubbing or anything like that on it. So that's that's our main focus. And so, um, how do we get more schools in California? You have them get in touch with you guys, or you get get them in touch yeah, yeah. with me. Yeah. Well, first off, where where, me. where what the website is? What's the website? They Quero can go Glove. to. It's Quero Gloves. C U E R O Gloves dot com. And they also have Instagram and a Twitter account. Um, we do. We'll, so, it'll be all linked in uh, yeah, the, we'll the put descriptions it in the- and everything. You know, I was going to ask too. So for like, if let's say it's a, a high school here in the in Central Valley looking for, um, you know, they want to do custom gloves with their logos on it. I, the city ones came out great. Chad hooked me up with a pair. Um, they, they look fantastic. They came out great. They were super comfy. I know you guys did white and red. Mm-hmm. Um, and listen, the, I think people need to hear this. You know, you had some wear, but you guys, you you guys fall, you guys hit no, every we, single day. We got, a, we got them right after Christmas. We got ours right after Christmas. Uh, and the majority of guys made it through the season just with yeah. alternate mm-hmm. jersey colors. That's why you had the two color yeah. gloves. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, as much hitting as you guys did, uh, and they lasted. That was the one thing I noticed. I told Chad, they just you. I don't see them all torn up. You don't see where the the Velcro was was all torn up. I doing it, our high school coaching here for twenty years. You know, we would do Adidas in our gear pack, and I mean, by the fifth or sixth week, you know, the palms got a complete tear in it. Yeah. Um, and that's the first thing I thought of was, you know, how do we get connected? You know, Quero gloves to these guys' gear packs because I can tell you right now when we do gear packs and it's Adidas or Nike or or whoever you're talking $35, $40 pair of gloves. And I know that's not what he got <laughs> from you guys. Uh, and I don't know what your minimum quantity is for orders. Um, if you want to kind of get into that, if a team decides, Hey, let's, let's try this. Let's see how these work. Yep. Our, uh, our minimums and our pricing is really based on quantity that you order. 
Um, our retail price on our base pair of gloves is 38 bucks, so we're right there in line with a decent pair of Franklins or Nike or Under Armour or anything like that. Um, once you get up to three dozen pairs, uh, that drops you down by 15%, so that gets you about 32 40 per pair, and that's full custom. Um, we uh, The way we price our gloves is – is we make sure that uh, our quantities that you order are cumulative. So if you order this year, you ordered 50 pairs, we would give you the 50 pair price. If you came back the next season and ordered 50 more pairs, we would give you the price for 100 pairs. So it's not per order, it's per li- it's basically a lifetime quantity that we accumulate because we want to get you guys to the best price, the lowest price as quick as possible and to encourage reorder as much as possible. So uh, pricing also includes, uh, there's a one-time setup fee for your logo. We cast your logo in, uh, we basically CNC it out of a chunk of aluminum, and that that's used to uh, to make the, the logo that goes on the back of the glove, and that's a one-time fee. Um, we've got teams that have used the same logo for six or seven years with no issues. So that thing is basically... Uh, done for you know it's good for as long as you want to take with that logo uh we also have you know we have to charge a little bit of a shipping fee on top of that so that's really just a pass-through cost for that so that's uh that's our base pricing and how that stuff works what's the turnaround time once so from start to finish design we approve the design and logo and colors and now it's time to manufacture what's the typical lead time for you guys uh right now we're looking at about uh maybe five to seven weeks. Uh, my manufacturer has been pretty busy and he's been a little bit slower lately. There's been some material issues over there uh, where they make them. And so we're looking at about uh, five to seven weeks at this point. I mean, that's from uh, your design is done. That generally takes a few days to get the mock-ups done and get them all tweaked out and make sure that that's done. Um, and then once you pl- pay your deposit, uh, which is a 50% deposit, we'll put your order in that same day and that'll go with the manufacturer and and then uh, the rest will be due on delivery. So not too bad. I mean, so the, basically, I mean, I mean, especially in this day and age with COVID and everything, it's been hard to get stuff anyways. So five to seven weeks is pretty good. No, I, I'm especially I for full custom team order. I mean, we ordered 60 batting gloves and I think we we were four to six weeks when we got them. And I think we got them in week five or so. I mean, so it was, uh, they get good. I mean, you you think about custom gloves, color, everything. The turnaround's pretty good, especially for a quantity. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, maybe <clears throat> team's still looking. It's still an option. I know uh, with all the travel ball orgs in our area, I mean, now's the time because summer's going to gear up in about, you know, three to four months. They're going to start going bananas till, you know, sure. through the fall. Uh, so now would be like the time to get the art process going to get – uh, what you want customized going in order to have them by summertime. Uh, and, and again, if you're out there listening again, Um, You know, I also saw you guys have, I don't, are you still doing stuff with King of Juco? I know you did some stuff in the past or a custom uh, for him. We did me and uh, Eric. I was just, I reached out to him on Instagram uh, I sent him a big box of gloves, like a couple dozen pairs of gloves for him to try out and just to give out to all his uh, his minor league guys out there, a little, little, little outreach thing. And he loved them so much that we did the, his uh, his Juco Bandit uh, models. We sold out of uh, about 100 pairs of those in about an hour and a half. So that was a, that was a fun little project to do. Uh, we don't have anything else queued up, but we could certainly do. We could certainly do that again if he if he wanted to do that. So he was a, he's been a super great guy. He's he's as soon as I text him, he'll text me back within 15 minutes. So he's uh, he's on the ball. I love that guy. Yeah, love that guy. He, he definitely has some fun out there in the, the baseball world, putting out a lot of content. Um, is base is is the baseball side of it now the the mainstay for you? Or are you still doing a fair amount of the cycling stuff? We do cycling gloves. The the volume is on baseball is way way higher. I mean cycling gloves are really just that's kind of a vanity project really i just wanted some cool gloves for myself and had the capabilities of of making them so i made my own and and a lot of people like them so uh it's it's way less um definitely way less baseball orgs right you could have an org with with 12 teams right that's 180 pairs or something like that right that'll that'll shoot my cycling that kills my cycling volume (laughs) just in that one order so so that's that. We act. Uh, we are actually working right now on a golf glove. 
uh, we've we've had some interest in doing uh, golf gloves, and so we're we're working on some prototypes for some golf gloves right now. We're we're going to probably team up with a uh, with a uh, an organization that sells corporate golf packages, and they have stay and play packages and things like that. So that's another avenue we're looking to to sort of expand into. So uh, golf gloves are a little bit different than batting gloves. They're you know there's actually uh, 11 sizes of golf gloves so it's a uh, it's a uh, it becomes a big big deal to keep all those skews uh, straight with the colors and everything so it's just a it's a different market that would be good for like fundraisers the golf tournaments and stuff have that as a gift kind of package or well yeah i mean if you're you can do a yeah, golf, I would like- golf glove for your high school golf tournament like yeah there's yeah yeah, the guys that I I met these guys at the Texas High School Baseball Coaches uh, Association convention a few weeks ago in Round Rock, and they were actually a uh, one of the main vendors for the Pitch Logic system. And it turned out that the company that owned them and that they worked for also had this golf division, right? They had an interest in that golf, and so uh, part of their funding for the Pitch Logic thing is they would run fundraisers for the high schools to pay for the pitch logic and pay for all this extra equipment, right. Through all these golf tournaments. So the company would set the golf tournament up, run the tournament, uh, all the, all they had to, all the players had to do, or the teams had to do was, uh, get the players and, and that was that. And then they would get a check to fund all this stuff at the end of the day. So we're going to try to bundle up some batting gloves in there. We're also going to try to get some of the corporate sponsors to, uh, pick up a golf glove, put it in the swag bag for all the golfers and stuff like that. So that would be an, a little synergistic thing, right? So your team could get a nice pitch logic system. They could get everybody some custom batting gloves. Uh, everybody at the tournament would get a nice golf glove. And you really don't have to do anything except for send out a couple of links and promote the tournament a little bit. And then every, all the players and the corporate sponsors end up paying for all that stuff. So that's a, another route we're, we're pursuing a little bit lately. Yeah, but business is expanding. That's it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I I'm mean, glad, I'm glad I found him. I'm, you know me, I like all the, custom yeah. Stuff so like, I that, and I was going to say that like to this guy is very much into that type of stuff, the detail. And, and so for him to be impressed enough to even want to pursue the order, I was like, Oh, it's not a piece of crap product. No. Um, and I don't know what your taste was when you were hitting or you gloves for you. I mean, I liked a fairly thick. I was almond. very impressed. Like, um, I almost wish I was still playing <laughs> to use them. I just got to wear them when it was cold outside <laughs> to look cool. Um, but uh, they were the type of batting glove that I would use if I was playing today because the durability, like you get batting gloves, you sweat and everything. They could be done in after a game, you know, like I had some Nike gloves that looked really cool. Yeah. And you paid good price for them, but the, the Nike might be the worst batting glove out there because um, it's poorly made. And, I really like the Franklin. So when I saw his glove and you can customize them and I can get a customized batting glove for the same price as I'm buying a normal, just batting glove who wouldn't want that. And, and I just thought it'd be really cool for Fresno city. And I contacted him. It was, our relationship was really great. We, I mean, you got back to me really quick. Um, I think I'm a little different. I kind of know exactly what I want. So I was like, I want the bag of this color. This you probably this. didn't have to mock it up. He probably had it done already for you. That's how Chad has got gear already set for like 2028. He, he's all far. Uh, I'm really ahead. into that stuff. So I think I might have helped Jason out a little bit more than just some somebody would be like, oh, I want to see 20 different mock ups. And I was, you did send me some. And I was like, oh, I just want these two right here. So it was a, it was a lot easier, but um, hey, I love those. I love those kind of guys like that. People who know what they want. Right here's five options. I want A and C. We're gonna go with A and C. All right, we're done. Let's go. Let's get that stuff knocked out. So that's, uh, you know, you guys are great customers. You knew exactly what you wanted. You had super quality, uh, high quality files to provide me with your logo. So that made all that stuff real easy, right? Um, we knew exactly what the color scheme needed needed to be there wasn't anything super fancy um obviously you had a couple of the test pairs of gloves that i sent you a couple of samples so you could see the quality that you're getting so you know i love you guys you guys were were huge uh huge supporters of us on social um you guys amazing i love you guys i appreciate it so much i was sad to see you guys uh see you lead the the program um i hadn't been able to get much traction with those guys again unfortunately so they they haven't reordered yet so uh it's it's been great but 
Chad, I've talked to you about my son. My son's a pitcher, so I appreciate your your insight on that that side of the thing as well. So um everything. Yeah, well, I'm uh, being- you know me, I'm baseball talking baseball and our relationship doesn't just go with just oh, I order batting gloves from this guy and that's it. So I mean we we've talked I've talked more to Jason than I have to a lot of people this this baseball season. So um and I'm trying to do as much as I can to help. It's just been rough not being in the game right now. Um but I think I was just thinking of a big market that we we need to try to hit up more of the travel ball market here and then. I, I don't, how much uh, California business do you do? I mean, do you do a lot out here or any custom? Like, I mean, Sacramento has been real great to us in the Elk Grove, Roseville area. Like, there's a bunch of one just high quality baseball. And if you're listening in that area, I'm telling you, this is it's cool to it's cool to have something like this for your players. Yeah, I, I would have loved to have custom gloves when we played or, or whatever it was like getting team cleats was cool. And I, I just feel like if you can incorporate into your gear pack, why not have something custom that costs the same as what you're going to yep. pay for a name brand uh, that, I mean, I've, I've rarely seen kids get through a season with the stuff we get on our team stores. Uh, to me, it's a no brainer. Uh, and again, this is not like a paid promotion. We, uh, you know, Chad just spoke really. I believe, I believe you know, it's, it's what, it, it's what it is. I don't want people to think we're just, you know, selling it. Um, it's quality. He raved about it. He's, he's, you know, and he doesn't just jump in and do that kind of stuff. So, uh, anyway, we can help you out here on the West coast. We're absolutely into it. Well, I mean, any, any business you guys can send to us. I mean, if they just let me know that, uh, that you, they came through you guys or, or, or whatever the case may be, we'll take care of, we'll take care of everybody. Right. For this same service we provided to Chad, we provide to every one of our teams. Um, I, you know, we support you guys. If you, if you hit us up on Instagram or post it, then we'll repost it immediately. Right. We do all that. We we love our guys. We love all of our players. We love seeing the guys with the best gear. Um, I appreciate the the kind words about our product. Uh, we worked hard to make sure that they're the best, the best quality that we can make. Um, I, I always, uh, a buddy of mine went to the coaches show with me and he said, look, every player has two or three pairs of batting gloves in their bag already. So why wouldn't you get the best ones, the best custom ones? And they're not any more expensive. And most of the time they're going to be, they're going to be less expensive and they're going to last way longer. So why wouldn't you do that for your program? Right. So that's, uh, that's kind of the sales, the sales pitch there. And you know, you know, with you the know. kids today, I mean, it gets some talking. Yeah. You know, like, oh, those yeah. are sick. Those are sweet. You know, and and the next thing you know, a coach is that's what happened with Clovis, right? They hit you up, they saw what you guys had done, and and yep. really liked it, and that they wanted to follow suit. Um, you know, I, I that's, what up, that's what ends up happening a lot, right? So we got the FCC gloves, and then there'll be four or five other schools or or somewhere local that have seen them and actually felt them and know the quality's good, and then they'll call an order, right? So we're, it just takes a couple of ambassadors here or there or a couple of really high profile guys in an area to start start uh, wearing them around and ask them what they are. And then it sort of picks up a little bit from there. So, I mean, I'd love to have at schools anywhere in California. We take JUCO, we take high school, we take travel ball organizations, any and every all comers. We, we do our best quality for everybody and and treat everybody the same. So, you know, we love you guys and would love to love to have have more of you guys out there with us. I tried. I, I mean, people would always say, oh, you guys got those custom gloves when we we're playing. But it's yeah, it looks cool, but they got to go pull the trigger. You know, that's that's the hard thing is getting everybody just to. Yeah, we'll just go order them, it's, you know, so. Um, yeah, like I got Jason. I'm going to text Jason real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably answer you right there, whatever I'm doing. So. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. We'll take care of it. Yeah, it's a it's kind of a hard sell. I think the sales cycle for most of the most of the schools and orgs that have never heard about us it generally will take about a, a year unless they're just super into it right they got to know hey this is good quality stuff uh they got to probably know somebody else who's who's worn them before you know there's there's a lot of well we gotta have budget for it and i mean there's a whole bunch of bazillion different factors but certainly yeah, it's, but it uh, just it, needs to get out there more it just needs to be seen no. so it does. Um, it does and that's on my 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 fault too i've been out of the game so i've been kind of away from it but I should probably – I have pairs of Fresno City and the the other just Quero gloves. I have the F3s and the and the, the f one. So um, I just need to go take them to schools and travel orgs and just let them feel them and see the quality. And then, uh, you know. And I mean, if you're interested, like the Chad's dead serious. If you're in our area, uh, <clears throat> yeah, high school around here or travel, whatever, like Chad, I'm sure, will be more than willing to let you at least 
check them out and see what they are and and the, sure. the construction of them. I mean, I think I have a couple yeah. pairs as well. And that's going for our audience. Let me know. You're here. And, you're, he, you know, Jason, come out just, under your school. just said, if you, you know, let them know hit or die. You heard it on hit or die or you saw it on hit or die. And uh, whether you like us or hate us, it's okay. You know, it's for your kids and your players, <laughs> like whatever helps the kids. That's fine. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys. This has been, uh, it's been great to be on online. Um, I, I'll tell you this one little cruddy story. Um, it's always funny when I give a pe- give someone a pair of batting gloves of our gloves for the first time. They put them on and they're like, "Wow, these are really nice gloves." I'm almost insulted when they tell me that. I'm like, <laughs> "Are you serious, man? Are you telling me that I'm gonna put some piece of junk that you just ordered from some catalog in in Pakistan somewhere out there?" I'm like, "No, dude. We've spent thousands of dollars and thousands of reps and thousands of hours like perfecting these things, man. We're not gonna put out junk." So it's, I get a little worked up on this, right? I how much, kind of how much <laughs> did the, the cycling part of it help the create the concept for the, the uh, baseball side of it? I mean, cause cycling again, durable, that's, that's what you're using. You're, yeah. you're, you're with your hands, your palm. I just noticed when you talked about the palm part of it, how much did that cross over from the cycling use? Well, the cycling use, right? You only touch your bike on three spots. You touch it on your shoes on your ass when you're sitting on the seat and on your hands. So your hands have to be very, they have to be very, the gloves have to be very particular, right? You don't want seams in the weird spot from resting on the hood and stuff like that. So the cycling piece really helped me learn about fit and how a palm should be constructed. And the process that we had to go through for the cycling gloves, it actually took me over four years to get them, to get them done. Um, It taught me that the, the testing and the, uh, the testing period is really the most important part, right? I can make a nice design and draw something up that's good, but until I get an actual pair on my hands and test them and then give them to like 20 players to go test, I'm, we're not going to be there, right? I've done that. I've, I've short circuited that process a few times and it's always, you know, there's always, there'll always be some sort of like, Oh, well, Jake wore them and his hands are a little bit different and he had a weird like seam bust right here or he's tugging on the wrist a little bit. So his wrist had separated some right there. Right. You need all these guys wearing them in every single scenario and diving into bases and throwing them in their bag with their dirty clothes for a week and a half and then putting them back on. You need all those kind of oddball scenarios to go play, play themselves through. So the cycling piece taught me the the fit dial. You got to dial in the fit. And then you got to go through these testing periods. You got to go through them and hammer them, hammer them to death to make sure they're the best, absolute best quality possible. Yeah, I figured that would be a huge help just having that background because these guys aren't. It's not like going on a bike ride. These guys are these cyclists go. They're miles. They're going for miles at a time, not you know around the block a few times. So quality. Well, I had you know, a I had a, I had a guy, a couple guys, uh, a pastor at one of the local churches here. He did a he did a bike ride. They went from Southern California to Miami in 30, 34 days. And so I gave him and the uh, two guys wearing a couple pairs of gloves and they wore them every single day for 34 days. I've had bike gloves uh, be ridden in the Tour of Flanders in Belgium. I've had them be ridden in the uh, Ride the Rockies and the Continental Divide rides. And I mean, just hundreds of thousands of miles and hours ridden on those things. So they've been, they've been, uh, they've been tested hard, ridden hard. <laughs> well, if you're a cyclist looking for gloves, this is also your stop or one stop shop to go. That's it. And we got two new models coming out for cycling. We got an update of on our, on our all leather model, and we have our very first mesh back uh, slick summer model coming out. And those should be out here in the next uh, month or so. Nice. Yeah, no, that's pretty sweet. I again, I, I I just loved them. I love the fact that it's it's available. It's an option because I always wondered that. Like we're uh, doing even just regular baseball gloves. You know, whether you're an infielder, outfielder, to get a custom glove is kind of a challenge today but so when when chad mentioned getting custom batting gloves, i'm like well where the heck are you going to do that and uh again it seemed like a pretty seamless process um if you're interested please check these guys out jason where can they go again to the website they can just go to querogloves.com uh there's a chat widget on the bottom that if you tap on that that actually comes to my phone i'll answer that tw- almost 24 7 uh we have instagram which is uh Quero baseball we have uh twitter which is baseball Quero. Uh, all the socials, all the all the websites, any any of those places, they all come to me. <laughs> so if you guys are interested, please mention hit or die, and uh, Jason will take care of you guys. 
And also just hit us up. We can come out to your school, your travel facility. If you guys want to see the quality, try on a pair, see how they fit. Um, we're here for you. And uh, we're here for Jason and Quero uh, gloves. Um, yeah. So we appreciate you, Jason, coming on. And and we should have done this a long time ago, yeah, but yeah. we were so busy with baseball season. And All good, brother. we've been talking it. about it, but we finally did it. So. Well, I just put in you guys' orders with the hidden the hit or die logo in, so those things are going to be nice and super oh, white clean. The hit or die gloves coming? Oh, yes, they are. They are coming. I was just talking to my vendor about an hour before we got on the phone, so we we finished that that process up. So uh, that stuff's in in process right now. Awesome, thank. And you. those are going to be the F three model, okay? But you haven't seen those. I have yet. it. So awesome. That's, that's my that's my favorite model, the F three. They're more of a modern. I don't know if you can see that. So that's oh, your yeah. F three model right there. Okay. This is a little bit of a. This is our summer model, and these will have all the upgraded features that we talked about before. They've got the new wrist strap, which is uh, triple reinforced seam. We got the one piece uh, palm. We've got the nice uh, summer weight light mesh back. So we're going to replace our CG logo here with the nice hit or die logo right across the back. Love it. And we'll be we'll be super tight. Love it. Be good. Everybody, go check out QueroGloves.com. Seriously. Um, I, I, Jason, I appreciate it. Again, Chad's right. We, this was if you're disappointed, overdue. I'll pay for your order. No, Chad said that because I don't got Chad's money. <laughs> well, I know they won't be disappointed. No, they won't be. I, 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 no, they won't. Absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, you will not be disappointed. We'll, we'll, uh, Chad, FCC had a few problems with some ripping uh, on some seams and yep. some small issues like that. We replaced them on instantaneously. So you got any problems with the order, we take care of every single guy that, that gets them regardless of where they come from or or whatever it was. We would hundred percent stand by every every product we put out there. Yep. No, good deal. Good deal. Everybody check out QueroGloves.com. Jason, again, thank you for coming on. Uh, we'll, we'll have to do this again uh, in the future. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Hit us up. And uh, that's another episode of Hit or Die Podcast. Hit or Die. Hit or Die, guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Appreciate Jason. it.